Boy, isn't that a nice sound? Nothing like brass sleigh bells. This is a set of sleigh bells that my brother made for me. We had a, a set just like this back home on the farm that we'd put across the, the harness on the back of, on the rump of each horse. And everyone around town knew that we were coming because they'd, they'd hear those bells ringing. And uh, so my brother found a few more bells online and made these straps and put these bells together for me. So I appreciate that, bro. And uh, with that, I thought I'd share a poem that I wrote with all you folks out there on YouTube. And I figured you would enjoy this. It's it's Christmas time, and and uh, it's it's a poem that I wrote probably oh 14 years ago. And the poem is called "Holiday Memories." Fond memories I have from when I was a boy give extra spice to the holiday joy. On or around Thanksgiving Day. We would hitch up the team and sleigh, then go up in the dell with the whole family in search of the annual Christmas tree. We didn't bring home the pine or a fir. We preferred the look and smell of a juniper. Now on the private land where we used to go, we'd sometimes search high and low in hopes of finding the perfect one, which to us kids was always fun. We'd spot a tree that looked real good, then hike through the snow to where it stood. We would check the tree before we started to chop to see if it only had one top. More often than not, there would usually be not one top, but sometimes two or three. So we'd look around and pick one more and then head out just like we did before. Now, we didn't kill the tree when we cut it down by cutting it off close to the ground. We would climb up or reach and cut out the top. And then we would carefully let it drop. Now the junipers would grow back and fill in so well that even years later you couldn't tell. We'd hike up to a tree, our legs tired and sore, to discover that we'd cut it a few years before. We would then drag the trees back to the sleigh, load them up, and be on our way. At home, we would cut off the bottom so that it was just the right height, put it in the stand in the family room, and decorate it just right. We would put on the lights and ornaments and not stop until it was finished with a star on top. Now the tree would turn to a bright shade of green and fill the room with juniper scent so keen. It would garnish the house until New Year's Day when everything was taken down and once again put away. In the winter, we usually fed with the team in the sleigh and even hauled manure that way. We usually had dry cows and heifers down the road, and to feed them, it took a pretty good load. Us kids loved to tie our saucers and sleds behind the rack. Then we'd have lots of fun riding down and back. Now the wind would make big snowdrifts by the cottonwood trees, and we'd have a blast riding over these. Sometimes we'd fall off and get covered with snow. We'd run to catch up as fast as we could go. Dad would slow down the team and often stop and wait so we could get back on and then be on our way. Now, when we got to the field, we were usually cold, <laughs> at least our hands, our feet, and our toes. Now, Dad taught us how to swing our legs and arms to get the blood flowing and help us get warm. We would pitch off the hay, which warmed us up too, so we were ready to ride home when we were all through. We put a forkful of hay over a cow length between so they wouldn't tromp and waste as much, it seemed. When we got home, we'd sit by the old wood cook stove, put our feet on the oven door because we were usually about froze. 
We'd sometimes have hot chocolate to warm us inside. It always tasted real good beside. There were always sleigh rides after dark around town. Folks would come to ride and spread Christmas cheer around. We'd put rows of straw bales on the rack and fill it with people from front to back. Prince and Pat was the team that we had at the time. They were dapple gray Percherons and still in their prime. They were in good shape from feeding each day and could pull a good load of people that way. We had old-fashioned sleigh bells across the rump of each horse. That's one of the best sounds in the world, of course. Folks would stand in their doorways to watch and listen as we passed. Now memories like that are made to last. We'd stop at the old folks' houses along the way to sing them a carol or two just to say, Merry Christmas and have a happy new year. May God bless and keep you. And there was sometimes a tear. Now these are some of the things that I remember best. There's not enough time to share all the rest. But may these few memories bring you joy as well as they have done for me and made my heart swell. You have a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. God bless.